Hello and welcome to another free code session. My name is Jason Bach and I wanted to work on this potential issue slash feature before I head off to VS Live Redmond, which is where I'm going to be speaking this week. I'm actually on vacation this week and I've been recording, well not, not recording, but editing recorded videos and uploading them before I leave. So I've got a nice backlog all scheduled in YouTube. And one thing I've noticed is that Camtasia is doing this weird thing at the beginning of my videos where it doesn't show the actual screen for like the first five or 10 seconds. And then it eventually pops up. And I don't know why. I've had some issues with Camtasia recently with their new 2024 version that it will say, oh, you're out of disk space. We can't save your changes. And I have over a terabyte left on my hard drive. <laughs> I'm like, how does this error actually come up in 2024? How can you make this mistake? It, this this should be, you know, this should be easy to at least go, how could we possibly be doing this? Because there is a message, you know, box showing up with a specific message in it. You should be able to trace through your code and figure out why would we be showing this? And there should be no reason I'm seeing that. But then this other one with the render <clears throat> issue, I'm not sure how they're going to be able to figure that out. You know, I, I have to admit, I have this kind of love, not love relationship with Camtasia. I, I've been using it for ever since I started really making coding videos. And for the most part, it works. But there are times where it has these odd issues and they're very difficult to diagnose and figure out how to get around them. So hopefully what I just did on this video is I moved around my screen, I clicked on stuff and switched the focus, and then I finally started recording and doing my, sh my, my, my stuff. And, and I also have to remind myself, stop drinking coffee when I'm recording videos, or at least pause so that the cut that I do doesn't show up that obvious. But it's the morning and I... I want to have some coffee. And my, my wife was so nice. She made me coffee this morning. Oh, that was great. She, she, she had the coffee and she put a little post-it note on the coffee machine and said, I love you. And I'm like, oh, that's so cute. Thank you. Anyway, I tried to like do some stuff before I actually started the, re, the, the, the stuff I wanted to talk about in this video. And hopefully then you won't see that. But if you've been seeing in the recent videos, this little apology thing I say about Camtasia, that's why. Anyway. Moving on, I wanted to do this work before I head off tomorrow. And that's the thought that, oops, let's move this over here, is this. What hap, no, not me, you don't need to see me. It's this, what happens if the interface or the type itself has a type constraint that's an anti-constraint? Not that we're using a ref struct and we need to have our own ref struct argument that does a anti constraint on it. The thing we're trying to mock has it on it. I'm guessing it's going to bomb. But what I'm hoping is this should be a uh, quick fix, quick ish fix. So that's what I'm going to try to do in this episode and maybe another one. And then I'm also going to talk about the next set of work I'm going to do. And then I'll go on my break. So I will be off for a while. But I have lots of videos recorded and ready for you to watch. Anyway, so I got this test set up. I'm in a branch for this. And so I haven't run this yet. So let's actually do that. And it failed as expected. Because now we need to get all the code. Oh, I allow rough structs. Maybe if I actually put in the right name. Okay, now we've got source being generated. Okay. So let's do the dance and get this all in here. Come on. Okay. Well, <clears throat> that was surprising. It passed, even though it's not putting that constraint here. And I don't think that's technically right. Like, let's put this up here. Okay, so I've got this interface. Okay, now I say public class mock of T that implements I allows ref structs of T. 
And so now I say implement the interface. Oh. So if I say which he allows refstruct, huh. That's interesting. You don't have to do anything. Though if I think about this now that I've done it, you don't have to do anything. Like if I sit here var m is equal to new mock of a span of int, and then I say m dot do work. And then I say one, two, three. Yeah, that's fine. And that kind of makes sense. So if I took this off, oh yeah, now it doesn't work. Okay, so that's actually wrong. Even though the inner, so this, that's kind of interesting that the help in Visual Studio doesn't put that there, even though this is defined that it should have it. So now I'm in this interesting quandary of, well, should you do that? It makes sense to me off the top of my head that if a type parameter is anti-constrained, <laughs> that's a mouthful, anti-constrained to allowing something, it doesn't flow through here. You would have to say that like you are here. And then that works. Now, if I said something like we're T is a class. The constraint clause is always specified. Oh, so you would just then do this, right? And then cannot allow ref structs for a type parameter known from a constraint to be a class. Well, that kind of makes sense. Because if you allow a ref struct, then there are actually rules about <laughs> it's an anti constraint, but there's rules about how you could actually use a ref struct there, if that makes sense. This is fine. It doesn't bark about this definition and it doesn't bark about this and it doesn't say you have to do this. But if you don't, then as you see down here, that wouldn't work. So I'm thinking we really want this to say, I think, yeah, we don't put it on the mock type, but I do think we would want it here or actually creating the expectations type because then that flows through everything because T has to allow ref structs. I, do th I personally do think we need to do something here. Let's figure out get constraints. I know there's like a get constraints and then there's a, so we go through the parameters. We say for each parameter, get its constraints. So, are we in the debugger? Yes, we are. So let's go to our constraint test and let's fire that up. Self has anti. This will be interesting because I don't even know if, well, the API that we're referencing for Microsoft code analysis should know this, but I'm not sure where we would actually find this on self. So it's not nullable annotation. It's a type parameter. It's not a special type. That's just its original definition. It is unmanaged. It's ref like record read only interfaces, base type, variance, type parameter kind, reference type constraint. Aral allows ref like that looks that looks like what we're looking for. So I think I've just found it. So if I say self dot allows, why aren't you self dot allows? That would be true. Okay. Let's go into another test here. Do I have a t test here that uh, actually puts a constraint on the type, not that it really matters. These are all on that, but let's just run this and see what happens if we actually get into that. Yeah, we do, okay. And so self is a T. 
sorry, I got sidetracked a little bit because when I was trying to figure some stuff out with Camtasia, they said reset Camtasia. What that did is it actually reset the defaults on the recorder, which I do not like because it's very easy to do a keystroke that says, oh, stop the recording by just accidentally hitting F9 or F10. And then the default is to bring up the editor when you do that. So my recording abruptly stopped and I was like, what, what's going on? <sighs> Did not like that at all. So I figured out, I don't know where the last video cut out, but in any event, and hopefully the weird recording thing that, cause it started another recording, hopefully that didn't happen. But yes, this does work and it does show that there. So I think what I need to do is just in here is say, because I think this does is, it will say where that type is and then that. So if I say if self allows ref like type, then I say allows ref struct. True if the allows ref struct constraint is specified for the type parameter. Now, if I do this, can you also put a struct on it? Like, let's come back up here and uncomment this. Can you say struct? No, because not null. Still, <laughs> that won't work anyway. The class struct and manage on all cannot be combined or duplicated, right? So we could say not null here, but then I'd have to say not null here. And then that works. So I can't just, the, the thing I was wondering about was, can I fall through and say, if that's the one that's there, I can't do any others, but that's not necessarily true. So I, ah, oh, crap, let's take this off. Which one has to be first? Is there an ordering? Yeah, this one has to be first. So let's back up the bus here and let's comment that out. So if we come back here, we would want to do this, I think, near the end. And if you constrained it to a specific, like you can't say class or interface, we already saw that doesn't work. You can't say struct, you could say not null. I think this might be the point where you could say allows, because the only thing it could have done beforehand is an unmanaged or not null. I wish there was a class, I'm sure it's somewhere within the bowels of Rosalind that says, what's the, how do you know what the correct order is of all the constraints? Because it knows, like I was just showing you with the error messages, it knows when you have to do one over the other. I don't really know like, could I say unmanaged here? Well, then that has to be unmanaged. So, but that is allowed. I can't say class here, right? That won't, can't say interface here. That doesn't work. I can't say span of int. Yeah, because it's a sealed class. So it wouldn't be able to do that class interface. I maybe could say new. Yeah, that's allowed. So, of course it's allowed. So I think this would have to be the last one. But the point is that these would never show up anyway. There would be invalid code if these did. And that's not on us. We can't, we're, we're not a compiler. So if you do that, that's wrong. So we could say allow rough struck here. Okay, so now what we would expect to see is where T allows ref struct and I also believe we would want that down here that's just getting constraints regardless if it's a create or make so let's see what this does that fails oh this is true <laughs> I keep going down the rabbit hole here that that is correct in that this can't be Argument. It's got to be a ref struct argument. Wow. This, this just got confusing. Why, why did I decide to do this? 
before I go on vacation. You know, well, I already am on vacation today, technically. But why did I decide to think about this before I fly off to Seattle? That makes no sense. What's wrong with me? I get what the problem is. Because here, T does allow a ref struct. It doesn't have to be a ref struct. When I put this code back in, and I say here, var m is equal to new mock of object, and I say m dot do work, that's perfectly fine. It does not have to be a ref struct. It's just allowing you to say, sure, if you want that to be a span event, that's perfectly fine. You can do that. You can just say one, two. And that works. So in some cases, it can be a ref struct. In other cases, it can't. So here's the interesting thing. And I'm just thinking about this right off the cuff. I'm just trying to reason this in my head. Ironically, this almost makes the argument type that we put in here an anti-anti argument. <laughs> it's like a reduction of what you can do because I don't know in rocks if you're going to be giving me a class or you're going to be giving me a interface type or you're going to be giving me a ref struct. I have no idea. All T allows me to do here is say that could be a ref struct. But by doing that, that now means this has to be a ref struct argument. And I have to treat it as a ref struct argument because then the only things that you can actually do are checking to see if it's valid by, yeah. So I think I, think I, I got this in my head. I'm gonna to have to look to say anywhere where I'm putting in a ref struct argument type the thing I got to look for to say is, is the the type there, does it allow rough structs? And if it does, then I need to make that a rough struct argument. Now that doesn't change what happens here. That's still T, although it might change the generated code if it's returning a value that is a rough struct because then we do that return value thing there. So I'd also have to make sure that I handle the underlying code correctly. So I would also need to have a check here to say, use data, return data, or something like that, and have both cases there. So I would wanna say, use data. So let's do this. What, what did I just do? I have no idea what I just did. Why are you, what's going on here? Oh my God, what? Why is it not doing that? I, I'm confused here because you should be able to say collapse, shrink. What the hell? Sorry, I. this is really bizarre. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. It always has done that. Oh my God, stop it. Yeah, now it's completely gone. I can't change. Oh my God. It used to be control M, control M. I'm almost positive. What? Oh my God, stop it. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, but now that's gone. <sighs> anyway. So we would need a use data. We would need a T. And now in both these cases, we have to make sure that we're doing the right thing in terms of the underlying implementations. In both cases, well, the first case is a rough struct argument. In the second case, we're returning something. We'd have to handle it as a, the return value as being a funk of T, not just a T itself. In other words, handle it as a rough struct. But because it's a T, it's not, it's a type parameter. It's not a type. So we can't just look at that as saying, yeah, what is unmanaged constraint? It's on a type parameter symbol. Oh God, this has now turned into a nightmare. 
I need to now figure out when this T is being returned, does it allow ref structs? Because this is a type parameter symbol, but we need, when we make a type reference model, we need to know if it allows ref structs, which means it either is a ref struct in and of itself, or it's a type parameter symbol, and it allows ref structs to occur. Wow, I, I opened up a Pandora's box with this one. You know, in the back of my head, I was saying to myself, don't do this. Don't work on this before you leave because you know you're going to get into things and you're going to realize <laughs> that it's much more complicated than you hope for. Okay, let's take some notes here because I'm going to forget because I don't know, one, if I'm going to be able to figure this out and complete it by the time I leave and I don't want to spend all day working on this either. So let's just take some notes. All right, so I'm going to take a little break, maybe read a book and do some packing. And maybe this afternoon I come back to this and try to finish this out. This one, I think, may just fall through in what we just did. But I still need to have a test around it to show that if we don't have it here, but it's here that we say that. And yeah, handle that. Okay, so I'm going to stop for now. And in the next episode, I will continue on and work on this. And then I will also start, hopefully if I remember this, start by talking about the work I'm going to do with projected types because I think I can make some small gains there. Thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.